what could have been tonight. The game started out with such promise. Javier looked good in the first inning. They loaded the bases early. They were getting to Kirby. And then nothing. A nothing burger tonight until the seventh inning. The Astros fall and are now only a half game above the Mariners. Let's talk about this and what they need to do tomorrow in a must-win game on this edition of Locked on Astros. Alvarez, it's a high drive center field. Beerling's back. This game is turned upside down. There's the runner. Fly ball down the right field line. Tucker comes on. Kyle Tucker. This time they finish the job. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros and we update you joins for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talks Astros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can I find you at? They can find me at HM Wheelhouse on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. They can find me at Stroh's 411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Stroh's. All right, so we have a, a lot on our agenda today. We have E-R-R-O-R-S. Eris <laughs> hurt the Astros. That's what a majority of our shows is going to be about today. But, guys, I wanted to take a second to thank everybody who's here at 1228 at night to talk and listen to us talk about the Houston Astros win or lose. We know who our everydayers are out there. The guys that are out there listening to us every day on YouTube, go and hit subscribe, go and make us your first listen on Apple Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, go and check out the lockdown Astros podcast. We do appreciate it. So yeah, this is uh this was a game that looked like there was so much potential there is a uh, bases loaded and with uh, no outs and then or one out maybe. And then you strand them with bases loaded. And then also you had a situation where Christian Javier had his stuff in the first few innings. He had his a game going, but then the errors started uh, accumulating. And then I just, it just, you could tell. There's this feeling that it was as good as everything went for the Astros in game one. The the Mariners were not going to just roll over and play dead in this game. And that's what they did. Well, you know, I think I think you can put blame on a lot of a lot of aspects of this game. Um, And Javier, for me, is not even the guy that I would really focus on because it wasn't until they pulled him. when I believe they gave up those three extra runs and really kind of put the game right. out of reach. Of course he did three of the runs were earned four were credited to him, but three were earned. Montero came in Montero really kind of, he just came in. It was bad in practice lately. Lately Montero has not been as good as he was the previous couple months. Like he had been nails and like recently he hasn't been doing great, but there, there are a lot of things to focus on. Um, It's not just the three errors, Um, you know, in the first, when you have Altuve getting a single Bregman, getting a single, your first two guys on Jordan grounds out. Okay. But then you have guys in scoring position. Um, second and third with only one out. Kirby walks Kyle Tucker. You get bases loaded. And then Jose Abreu for grounds out. Um, and they don't get the guy home. They don't score any runs. Then Yanner Diaz grounds out. Eric, they were two for 13 with runners in scoring position tonight. You absolutely cannot do that. George Kirby has given up seven home runs in his last six starts. He has given up either three runs, which he only did twice in his last eight starts, and he gave up four runs and six other starts. This guy, I'm sorry, four runs and four starts, three runs and two starts. So his last six starts, he's given up like 22 runs, I believe. He's given up seven home runs, and you couldn't manage anything on the scoreboard until the seventh inning. And I'm not going to talk about it yet, but – Pinch hitting John Singleton when you have Dubon and Brantley on the bench absolutely baffles me. That to me is not a move that a manager makes that wants to keep a lead in a playoff race. I'm sorry. I'm not saying Dusty wants to lose, but that 
that decision, he was not managing to win right there. And that that decision has got to be called out. That was a wrong decision. He's one for nine. One for nine in pinch hitting. You got bases loaded. Don't high-five a guy for getting a sacrifice fly and scoring one run. Get someone up there that's been hitting the ball lately, like Dubon, and score two runs. Get a crooked number on the board. I, I just... This game was very frustrating because I think it was a game that they could have won. Right. I believe they really could have taken advantage of some things. And at one point, they had as many hits as they had errors. The number was three. And they managed 10 hits tonight, Eric. 10 hits in two runs. They were getting that, on base. That, well, yeah. Well, they, they got on base, but they were two for 13 when they got on base. Right. Last night, all their runs they scored. We're with two outs. It's this Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I just don't know what's going on with this team. I don't get it. Kirby has not been great lately. He has not been great lately. He should have been susceptible. He's given up a home run. This is the first game that he has not given up a home run in his last seven starts. So put that in your pipe and smoke it because it's 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 hard to it's a it's a tough pill to swallow tonight for sure. Yeah, I know that Javier had runners on, uh, two runners on, I believe, in the fifth inning. And then he was at 91 pitches. This shows that Dusty Baker just does not have any confidence in him at this yeah. point. He, uh, despite his great start the last game, and he was showing some great stuff earlier in the game. Uh, the errors kind of uh, caught up to him. He did have three walks in this game, six strikeouts, and four and two-thirds innings pitch. But, um, yeah, the game just kind of fell apart from there. Uh, Sosa is doing pretty good for the Astros. It's a shame that if the Astros make it to the playoffs, he's not eligible because he was not on the roster uh, before the deadline. But uh, Stanek gave up a home run in this game. Um, so, But by that time, it was already it over. Was, it, was, it, was, it was out of reach. Like There are so many things that led up to that point. Right. To where you didn't even have to need to have to bring in Stanek. Um, look, I just Jimmy Pena. Can we tell can whoever's sending signals, whether it's Pettis, whether it's from the dugout, Jimmy Pena should not steal another base for the rest of the regular season or maybe the rest of 2023. You know why, Eric? He's been caught nine times in 13 attempts. Right. Look, I'm no major league player or coach, but I'm pretty sure if you get caught doing something nine times in 13 attempts, it means you're probably, you get horrible jumps or you're just not a good base stealer. And the bottom line is, Jeremy Pena, now, they didn't do anything that inning where you're kind of like, but my my point at the time was, you're taking runs off the board when you do that. We are swinging at pitches way out of the zone. We are, Mar Martin Maldonado didn't, I mean, so, hey, let's replace a 180 hitter with a 160, no, let's replace a 192 hitter with a 167 hitter to right. pinch hit. That's production. That's, that's, that's a winning formula. It's just, I was, I was, I was shocked. I, I'm still, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be surprised, but I'm, but I'm surprised. I know he stayed in the game, but uh, Yiner Diaz did foul a ball off his knee, and he looked like he was in a little bit of pain there. And also, Chaz McCormick, he did get hit Good by the pitch. Uh, that was me. that looked <laughs> yeah, that looked painful. And uh, he had to leave the game, and we had uh, Greg Kessinger come in the game as well. But um, to Seattle's credit, they did not cheer this time. Uh, maybe it's because it wasn't Jose Altuve, but they did not cheer this time. So yeah, they showed some class. Good job. Yeah, you know. show some class. Maybe they're uh, maybe since yesterday they've uh, taken some Nutrafol, and well, maybe they're they're in a little bit better mood. So this episode is brought to you by Nutrafol. Well, I don't know if gaining more hair would do the trick for them. Um, there's probably something else they need, but we won't talk about that on this show. Um, you don't have to choose anymore between better hair growth and your health. You can choose both. Nutrafol provides a whole body health approach for men that promotes healthier hair. No drugs, no compromises, just better hair. 
So men think losing their hair is inevitable. So take you can, can take take control of your hair's future with Nutrafol. Did you know that eighty percent of men will experience hair thinning in their lifetime? Good lord, I can't something's kill my nose right now. It's normal, but it doesn't have to be your fate. You can get ahead of thinning hair with Nutrafol. Take the first step. Invisible, thicker, hair, healthier hair for a lifetime. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your our first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and use the promo code locked on MLB. That's N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com slash men. Enter the promo code locked on MLB today. So, guys, the Astros will be playing the Mariners again. This is a must-win situation for the Astros. I mean, if you if you lose this game tomorrow, you're going to go into the final series out of the wild card picture. And so, if you want to catch all the play-by-play action, go ahead and, and listen to it on SiriusXM. Just download the SXM app and search Astros. And, yeah. Hopefully they put up a little bit better effort than today. It's, I mean, this team prides itself on good defense, yeah. good pitching. Their their defense this year has been horrible all year long. This is not something that just happened yesterday, and you and I have talked about it ad nauseum. What is Jose Altuve doing throwing a ball when Eugenio Suarez is already sliding into third base, chunking a yeah. ball like someone threw him a grapefruit or something like a soft, like he threw it like a softball player throws a softball in a softball tournament in a beer league. That was terrible. I just it's it's mind numbing, and they're professionals, and I know they're human. I know I know they're not going to be perfect, but man, you you never had a chance tonight, really. I mean, you you really never did because the opportunities you had, you you crapped them away. Um, and you followed it by terrible defense. It just they better get their heads out of the rear end for tomorrow. They better put this behind them. They better just shake it off and just have a really short memory. And tomorrow's a uh, must win. Tomorrow's a right. must win. You know what sucks also is that the Rangers uh, lost today, the Blue Jays lost today, and the Mariners won. So this kind of uh, – muddies up the pictures in the AL West a little bit and in the wild card a little bit. So um so you could have gained some ground on the Blue Jays. You could have gained some ground on the Rangers. You could have um maintained your ground on the Mariners, but instead no, it's, you would have it's grown crazy. no you would have grown your ground on the Mariners. You wouldn't have maintained it. You would have yeah grown, you're right you're right you would yeah. have gotten bigger. Yeah um, it's 1240. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Corona asked a question. Has the shift, you mean, you mean banning the shift hurt the Astros' defense? I think they depended on it. They were, they shifted the most of, I think, them, and I think it was the Rays. But, yeah, banning the shift has affected the Astros' defense. Their defense was heavily, almost too much dependent on the right. shift. Absolutely, it has hurt it. Um, but a banning of the shift had nothing to do with Jose Altuve throwing that ball Had nothing to do with any of those errors tonight had nothing to do with the shift, but they're, they're take, pressing take at that point. Up. They're trying to make the, be the superhero and make the great play. I mean, that was a great catch by Kyle Tucker. I he, amazing catch he made a great leaping catch. And, but unfortunately he threw, he made a great throw into Altuve, but Altuve just airmailed it. And it looked like it was one of, Javier's invisibles. It just kept on rising up into the stands. And uh, it just was a situation where maybe you would should have just held on to the ball. I mean, but yeah, you eat that. You eat that. You just you just hold it, you don't throw it. Um that changes the complexion of the game again. I, I was I was really excited when they got bases loaded, Eric. I really thought, okay, they're gonna break this open. They're gonna score three or four runs here. This is what they need to do. And part of, you know, one of my keys to the game was getting to Kirby early, attacking him early, putting a crooked number on the board, Javier keeping the runs off the board. And I guess keys to the game tomorrow night will be like, just just play defense, like just right. get outs, like get outs. <laughs> That's going to be one of my keys to winning. Just get an out. 
just get a win. Uh, that's what you got to do. And um, Christian Javier, I thought at the beginning the game, he literally had the stuff. Uh, he was um, – the ball was rising. He was hitting yeah. um, his slider into the strike zone. And he was getting – it looked like the old Christian Javier. And then all of a sudden it just – I, I – it's just so weird how it just snapped like that. And well, that's what arrows would do to you. Well, he looked, he looked very unsettled. He looked comfortable right. at first. You could tell he was confident. And then you could, you can tell when Javier loses right. his confidence. And what's weird about Javier losing his confidence and it being visible. Like I made a comment to someone in, in the bunches app about he wears his emotion on his sleeve. He does, but it's like, you have to really watch his facial expressions. And you have to watch his breathing patterns when he's on the mound. You can tell when he's pressing. Um, and it's not just a perspiration thing. So I think some, well, I mean, obviously up there it's colder, so they're not going to perspire as much, you know, in Minute Maid Park. We know it's like a thousand degrees on the field. But right. um, you can tell when a guy's perspiring because he's worried and when a guy's perspiring just because he's like working too much. And Javier just, he, once he got out of his comfort zone, I was like, ah, uh, Things are going to unravel. And then I was shocked when they brought Montero in. Um, you know what sucks? This this Souza guy, if we do make it to the playoffs, he's not eligible for the playoffs. Yeah, I already mentioned that earlier, yeah. That sucks. That absolutely sucks. The dude's perfect six and one-thirds innings, and he hasn't given up a run or a hit or a base runner. So, wow. Um, hey, Brett, uh, you know what says I want to make the playoffs? What losing ten out of the last fourteen games? <laughs> That's what the Astros have done. Says playoff base. Nothing How says to me. Heck, are the Astros still where they are? They've lost ten out of the last fourteen games. Well, That's a failing grade on a test. Submit the dynasty. <laughs> I mean, geez, guys, come on. Uh, heavy, are, heavy is the head that wears the crown. How many cliches can we come up with? Ready to rain. It's raining tears right now in Astros land. It's raining. Oh, my gosh. Can we can we please not get bounced from the playoffs? Can we please not get bounced? I mean, look, I don't mind if we get bounced from the playoffs. Let's at least, get to the playoffs. I rather, let's, at least let's at least get to the wild card series. I want to at least get to the playoffs. Let's get to the playoffs and anything can happen in playoffs. Mm. That's the great thing about the playoffs is no matter what happened in the regular season, as inconsistent as this team is, anything can happen. Uh, we did have an update on Chaz McCormick. He left the game with a left side, lower back contusion. Mm. And so um, they said that he doesn't know if he'll be available tomorrow. Dusty Baker said he doesn't know if he'll be available. Well, Brantley has but, to play tomorrow, right? Huh? Brantley has to play tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, McCormick is pretty sore, but said, I think I'm all right, though. Oh, that's so, good. Yeah. It looked so we'll bad see. the way he went down because that was a 99 mile an hour pitch. That wasn't a little, that wasn't a little float or a little, you know, curd that got out of it. I mean, Munoz throws smoke. There's absolute gas on the mound. Okay. And I have an answer uh, to why Michael Brantley wasn't the guy instead of singleton because he wasn't available no um he said that michael brantley was available but it takes him a while to get loose also he thought singleton had his best chance for a homer hold on hold on what wait thoughts by dusty all right. So Dusty so, Baker, hold on. So Dusty Baker, Dusty Baker literally said that. that this you're is not, what this Brian McTaggart just uh, tweeted. This is uh, this isn't from Fact Sports. Well, Forty-four. Okay. This is we not never been fake. No. This is not, not, not from. This is not from New York Ports. This is not from Fact Sports. This is a Dusty Baker actually said. In no offense, look, look. Jonathan Singleton is a part of this team, and he deserves his shot when he gets his shot. Yeah, but so we're when, talking about winning a game with two proven bats in Mauricio Dubon and Michael Brantley, the professional hitter who has done nothing but hit since he's come back. Why is it in a playoff? 
I don't get it. Why is it in this situation where we are fighting for our playoff lives? Why is that the situation that you bring Singleton in? Here's that a quote directly from Twitter or X about. I know. I just Brian McTaggart. I'm, I'm so close to breaking all these regulations we have on foul language. This this is so flipping unnerving, dude. It makes no, it doesn't make any sense. Like, no, you don't. This isn't spring okay, training, right? Dusty. It's not spring training anymore. God it's bless. Okay. No, you know what? I'm sorry. Look, I'm going to say it right now. No, I'm. Oh. Man, if we don't make it, I hope we get a new manager. If we don't make it to the playoffs, I hope he's out after this year. I'm done with him. All right. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. Eric's got one. All it takes to get is a Jace case. You fill out a simple online form. In some cases, um, jump on a quick phone call with one of our board-certified physicians. Get ongoing care from our physicians on any treatment-related questions. Doctor created, doctor recommended. Don't get caught unprepared. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones. During the unexpected, Jace handles everything from online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation, um, consultation and care. So make sure that you get your Jace case today and you can save a lot of money doing this. You get $20 off of these life-saving antibiotics today from Jace Medical by using my code locked on at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E Medical. Dot com empower yourself today to save money and possibly get better health when you need it and make sure that if you're going to go watch the astros tomorrow night beat the mariners because i still believe they're going to beat the mariners and win this series even the as distraught as i am there's a great place to go where do you go you go to hooters why because hooters makes you happy they have great service from the world famous hooters girls they have locations all over Houston, from Katy to Sugarland, from Pasadena down to Galveston, up to Humble, anywhere in between. I mean, it's great food. And, you know, if you're going to go there on what is tomorrow, Wednesday, um, you're going to see that they have buy one, get one boneless wings. You get just tell them you want to buy one, get one wings, get the smoked wings. You You can thank me later. And tell them that the guys from Locked on Astros sent you. You get a free basket of fried pickles. And just know that each week, Monday through Friday, they have happy hour 2 to 7 and 10 p.m. to close. $3 Blue Moon drafts and 99 Michelob Ultra pitchers. So make sure you check out Hooters and tell them that Locked on Astros sent you. The Astros do play the Mariners on Wednesday at 8.40 p.m. Central Standard Time. Catch every pitch. The Astros hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Search Astros. So hold on. I know I just launched into Dusty, and I launched into, look, let me just say this. And I try to I try to temper my words because I don't want people to take my words and run with them and use them as fodder or as weapons against players. You know, here's the thing. John Singleton is a professional player, and he's on this roster, right? right. So he goes in there. Had he hit a grand slam, that would have been an amazing moment an amazing move. But I just honestly think when you're looking at winning a game and things are so critical, these are the kinds of decisions that Dusty makes that cause a lot of people to say a lot of negative things about his managing style and why people will simply say, I don't want him to be the manager next year. And it is, it is, it is a tough pill to swallow to watch that happen and only get one run out of it. A sack fly is great. A sack fly is great in a three to two game. You tie the game up. I get it. But when you have a Dubon, I mean, I would say the same thing if Michael Brantley was Singleton. And Singleton was Brantley. And Singleton was the guy on the bench that that had the storied past and was a professional hitter. Be like, why didn't you put that guy in? I just, I just know that I'm not the only one thinking that. And it was very frustrating. The bottom line is, though, the Astros should have never been in that position to begin right. with. And that's the larger narrative in baseball. It doesn't just come down to one decision. It's what led to that decision and what led to them being in that position. They should have never 
been in that position. They shouldn't have made those errors, and they should have capitalized in the first inning. Um, look, people would have been praising Dusty maybe if John Singleton hits a grand slam, you know? Yeah. I, I just – so uh, you want to see the path to uh, the the playoffs from here? Uh, in order to go to the playoffs from here, you've got to win two in Seattle, and you've got to hope that Seattle loses one versus the Texas Rangers. Right. Well, or or I, I'm not you, done. If you okay, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. So then, uh, what if we only win one game? What if the first game was the only one we win? Then you got to sweep Arizona. Mm. and hope that the Mariners lose two versus Rangers. What yeah, if, I mean, look, it, it's still it's still yeah. very probable that that we could – it's still – we guys still got like a 70% chance of making the playoffs or 80, no, 82% chance, something like that. All right. You know what, you know what they're going to do? They're going to go to sleep. They're going to put this behind them, and they're going to show up ready to play. They're going to show up ready to compete. They're not going to panic. They leave that to us, the fans, the people that watch the game. But it is it is tough to watch at times. It is tough to watch. Um, Eric, who do we have going on the mound tomorrow night? Uh, this is a tweet directly from Brian McTaggart right now, kind of just uh, clarifying what I just said. Uh, but uh, while you're Wait, he's up, clarifying right? your words, <laughs> I'm joking. Well, well, yes, uh, he heard he was listening. He's like, yeah, I just want I heard this on the Lock on Astros podcast, so I'm gonna go and do it. But he said, if the Astros lose tomorrow and sweep the Diamondbacks, the Mariners will only will only have to split the four games with the Texas to get the final spot. So, yes, wow. so that's basically what I just said, different way. So, you're saying. saying tomorrow night is a must win. Every game is a must win at this point, especially if you want to get to the AL, uh, to the top of the AOS. I, I think that ship has sailed. Um, and you got two and a half games. Uh, they're at, they have a two and a half game lead. Mathematically, it's possible, but I just don't think that it, it's going to happen. So uh, we'll have to see what happens from here. But Today's game uh, was the, uh, probably the most frustrating game of the season because of the errors, and this was a very winnable game. And this, it was. all you had to do was play good defense and just get your bats going. Kirby was very yeah. hittable. One of his own fans hit him with a <laughs> foul oh, ball. Yeah. Like Idiot. so, <laughs> Kyle Tucker hit a foul ball. And the fan threw it onto the field, threw it back, and, and it hit him. Hit Kirby in the rib. Yeah, that was a good Kirby's throw. Like... A, B, his mom chewed him out as they were both kicked out. And he of was the like, stadium. he was like, um, I was sitting there trying to imagine what he's saying. It's like, bro, bro, what are you talking about, bro? I totally threw that ball. Like, you see me chunking like a major leaguer? Come on, but he was he he's probably calling his mom bro the whole time. That's what kids do. They call yeah. guys bros. They call girls bros. They call they call anything bro. Like if they see an elephant in the street, they're like bro. Anyways, I'm pretty sure he was broing it up. But hey, you, you know who needs to bro it up tomorrow night is Framber Valdez versus Miller. Um, nice Miller. Framber Valdez, I think, is going to pitch his you know what off. I think he's going to go out there determined. Um, you just hope he doesn't try to overthrow. But I hope we go out there and tag the crap out of Bryce Miller. I, re I really hope we we absolutely just hand it to this guy. His last seven games, he's given up 18 earned runs, okay, and okay. 41 hits. Perfect opportunity for the Astros to go out there because the last game he pitched, 4.1 innings, two strikeouts, six earned runs, six hits. So he has not done great lately. Um, right. he didn't give up any runs against the Dodgers, but he didn't get the win either. And he got the loss also against the Rays on the 10th of September, nine hits, five earned runs. He did have seven strikeouts, but he only has amassed six strikeouts in his last, um, 9.2 innings. So I think this is a perfect opportunity for the Astros to go out there and save face, leave town. If you win tomorrow night and you win one game in Arizona, you got it because there's no way Seattle can tie you at that point. I think they would 
even if they, I think they would have to, I think they would have to sweep the Rangers, but even if then, if they sweep the Rangers, I think there's still one down from you. So yeah. win two, win the second, go to Arizona, win the first one, then it's taken care of. So Eric, if we're still having to fight for it, that means JV is probably going to have to pitch, you know, yeah. this weekend. If you're fighting for it, yeah, you're going to have to. And it's going to throw everything off the ALDS, and he won't be able to pitch to like game three of the ALDS. Forget the ALDS. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Forget the ALDS. No, 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 no. no. Wild card. Wild card. Wild card. Wild I'm sorry. Card. <laughs> Not the, ALDS. Yeah. I know. Hold on, dude. I know. Chill. Chill. I know. <laughs> I just, good Lord, man. Yeah. The it's wild card is a three night, game yeah. series. Yeah. The wild card's three game series, so so yeah. Um, actually, uh, Justin Verlander said last night that he had, they haven't discussed with him when he's going to pitch next. Um, so it will be regular rest to start on Saturday in Arizona, but if he starts, then he won't be on regular rest again until Game Three of potential wild card series. And if you wait till that game, that could be a must win situation. And I guess if you want anybody to start that game, it would be Justin Verlander. But I would think that they would want him to go game one. That's just my opinion. So, um, but at this point, you're just trying to get in to the wild card. So, um, anyway, um, any anything else? Um, Rally Hippo is tired. Hey, dude, if you had the Rally Hippo out, I'm sorry, Rally Hippo just lost his job. No, no, I did not have him next to me today. So, oh, so um, it's your fault. Oh, okay. <laughs> So we're going to end this show. It is Eric's fault because he didn't have the rally animal out. Well, listen. Hey. Respect the hippo. No, I'm not going to respect the hippo. Rally hippo. So <laughs> so the rally hippo is just going to go Dusty Baker and not show up for the game? <laughs> okay. Hey, we still got four left. Still got That's four all we left. got for this edition of the Lockdown Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Cox Rose. You can find <laughs> Brett at H-Town Wheelhouse. And don't forget to check out tomorrow's game on SiriusXM. XM, just download the XSM app. I can't talk right now. It's oh so my late. God. She <laughs> said the SSM app. Hey, you know what? I got to go back and redo these live reads. I'll be up till three in the morning. So, hey, right. let's have a good one. Kick that music in, Eric. Okay. And uh, thank you for making us your first listen every day, whether it's on YouTube, go and subscribe to us. Go and make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Go and check us out and uh, go Strokes. Let's get a I think we need to sell rally hippos. Someone's saying we need to sell them. We'll find a way to get a bunch of them, sell them. If they make it to the playoffs into the ALCS, we'll sell rally hippos. You're going to need rally hippo in the playoffs, okay? 